Hello, Pokemon fans! I'm Professor K for the Pokemon Evolutionaries, and today we are back with another episode of Deck Tech Thursday, where we take all kinds of competitive decks and we show you guys what makes them tick. Now, this one is actually one that I have been requested to do several times recently, and it's very ironic because I had full intentions on profiling this deck. I've had it in the works for three weeks. I actually built this deck uh, about well, about three weeks ago, took it to a local tournament and made top cut with it, but lost in the first round of top cut. I was expecting a lot of water decks, so I built this to counter it, and as you already know from the title, it's all based around this guy right here, Sceptile EX, and of course it's Mega, which is of course Mega Sceptile EX with that Jagged Saber attack. Uh, the deck has a specific strategy in mind for certain matchups and a specific set strategy in mind for other matchups. And I think it's a very versatile deck, However, it's very difficult to find a place for this deck in the meta to say whether it's Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. It really all depends on what's being played locally. It doesn't have a lot of bad matchups. Specifically, one would be Entei Charizard, but that deck has kind of just fallen by the wayside. But um, this is actually a very strong deck. It does really well once it sets up, and it doesn't have, like I said, very many bad matchups. Uh, only things that can one-shot it. That's the only thing that seems to be giving it any trouble whatsoever. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in here and show you guys what makes this deck work. Um, we're going to start off here with, of course, the main Pokemon in focus here is going to be Sceptile EX. It actually has a good attack here. Two good attacks, to be exact. Uh, Sleep Poison is good if you're going second and uh, you only have one Grass Energy, of course. Sleep Poison, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep and Poison, and it also does 10 damage. If you're going to be attacking with Sceptile, though, your main attack is going to be Unseen Claw for a Grass and a Colorless, 60 damage, and if your opponent's active Pokemon is affected by a special condition, the attack does 70 more damage, so that's 130 damage. That's quite a lot uh, for a 2 energy, um, ener er, re two energy requirement, and you're going to be applying 4 of these. So for Sceptile EX, the deck is very, very heavily based around this particular Pokemon, so you need to have four of them in play. Some Megas you only play a 3-3 line. In Mega Sceptile, you want to play a 4-3 line of Mega Sceptile. Let's take a look at Mega Sceptile. It's got 220 HP. It's got a uh, Delta Stop, or Theta Stop ability. It's got a, a, a Ancient Trait. There we go. Theta Stop is the Ancient Trait. Prevent all effects of your po opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to this Pokemon. So there's a few places where this might come in handy uh, if you have any opponents that are playing abilities that could really affect this particular Pokemon, Mega Sceptile, for instance. Um, for instance, um, I know there was an instance with Night March where there was a Mew with a Versatile ability. It, it, it affects this Pokemon, so it's no good. Uh, that's one opportunity that you can use it for. There's others as well, but um, the, the attack we're going to look at here is the only one on here is Jagged Saber. It does 100 damage for a Grass and a Colorless. You may attach up to two Grass Energy from your hand to your benched Pokemon in any way you like. If you attach energy to a Pokemon in this way, heal all damage from that Pokemon. So what you want to do here, if you're playing it as the Mega, you're going to want to set up two Mega Sceptiles and just keep a constant loop going of attack, heal with hand, retreat, attack, heal with hand, retreat. Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, creating an infinite loop of Mega Sceptiles. There's no way that they can knock you out as long as you're able to just keep healing. They have to one-shot you, and let's face it, guys, 220 is a big, big number to have to hit, and it's just not very easy to do, even for Night March. So... That is the lineup there for Sceptile. So if you're playing Sceptile as a Sceptile, you're gonna play uh, using Unseen Claw. If you're gonna play it as a Mega, you're gonna use Jagged Saber. There's a few different things, like I said, where that works out uh, really well. Low damage output decks, Jagged Saber all the way. This deck completely annihilates Greninja. There's nothing Greninja can do to touch this. I faced two of these at Florida States, and that is why I did so awfully. Uh, Mega Sceptile was a big deal there, and I just couldn't stop it. There's nothing I could do. Everything else, though, Unseen Claw seems to be a pretty decent attack. So, next lineup here we've got is two copies of Spinarak. Spinarak uh, is a 50 HP Pokemon from Ancient Origins, and of course, we're going to be using it for one reason and one reason only, and that is going to be our bench sitter, two copies of Ariados. Ariados has an ability, Poisonous Nest. Once during your turn, before you attack, you may uh, uh, use this ability. Both active Pokemon, except for Grass Pokemon, are now poisoned. So, if you've got a Sceptile in the active, 
and you activate poison as nest, you act you poison your opponent, but you don't get poisoned because you're a grass type. And that powers up Unseen Claw even more because you're activating an instant poison on your opponent and automatically Unseen Claw is hitting for 130 right off the bat. No questions asked. We have one non EX attacker in the deck, and that is one copy of Verizian with Bailout and Prize Count. Uh, bailout, put two Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand, something you're probably never going to use. But Prize Count, if you're behind in the game and you have more prize cards than your opponent, this can deal 120 damage for two Grass Energy. So 40 is not terrible, but for two Energies it's, it's not that great. Uh, but when it's dealing 120 damage for two Grass Energy, you better believe that's a game changer right there. So Verizon's good for that. Um, also, we've got two copies of Shaman EX because setup, it's just, it, it's not any way, shape, or form replaceable. Octillery is good in Greninja, but other than that, Shaman is the way to go no matter what. I hate to say it, guys, but Shaman is it. You want to be competitive, you want to be a great player, there's no real replacement for Shaman EX in the highly competitive tournaments. In a local tournament, Octillery is probably fine, but I hate to say it, you know, Shaman's expensive for a reason, and it's just, you can't ignore the fact of how good setup is. Um, it, it really makes the game a lot different. It speeds things up for you, it gets you things that you need, and I, 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 I know I keep hearing it in the comments section, I keep seeing it. Octillery's better, Octillery's better, you can use it multiple times, but you can only draw up to five. And there's only so many times you can get your hand down to the point where it's actually usable. You know, you can have a hand of four and only get one. You can get a hand of three and get two. But Shaman, it just seems like the one time that you use it is worth it and it's fine. Not to mention there are ways to get Shaman picked up as well and out of harm's way because I know it gives up two prizes. We'll get to that here in a moment. But this is the entire Pokemon lineup. That's it. So your attackers are Sceptile, Mega Sceptile, and Verizian. That's it. That's all you're attacking with. It's got a very linear strategy. Um, you're either going to be using Sceptile as a attacker using Unseen Claw, you're going to use Mega Sceptile as an attacker using Jagged Saber, or you're going to use Verizian in matches where... Um, you know, you're facing something like a safeguard Pokemon or evolutions can't attack like Glaceon, something like that. That's where you're going to be using Verizian. All right, so let's take a look at the supporter count. We have four copies of Professor Sycamore, of course, discarding your hand and drawing seven fresh cards. Sycamore is an obvious staple in every single deck. You never want to play any less than three of them in just about every single deck. Some of them only play two, but those are a bit different uh, different decks. But standard decks like this, standard builds that don't have a special strategy in mind, um, you want to play three or four, absolutely. Next up here we've got three copies of N. N is just an important staple. I mean, Sycamore and N, Juniper and N, uh, they all go together. Discarding seven and being able to shuffle back in and both players drawing as many prize cards as they have remaining. They're just, they're the staples. They're the, they're the original trainers in the black and white on format. I hate to say it, but uh, that's just the way it is. When we didn't have N, the game just wasn't as fun. N, even though people hate it, some people love it, some people hate it, some people don't care. Um, N makes a difference. It makes a difference in the game. It makes a difference in the player's attitude towards the game. It's just a really great card and it adds a lot of balance to it as well. Um, playing that crucial N can really flip a game around. You never know when it could either make or break you. So I think N is a great for the game. We have one copy of AZ. Being able to pick up one of your Pokemon, put it into your hand and discard whatever's attached to it. That's one way you can get a Shaman out of the harm's way for sure without any issues. You can also use it on Mega Sceptile to get it up and out of the harm's way as well. Uh, if you don't have the energy to retreat or if you don't want to. Um, there's really no reason other than that. I mean, you're going to retreat and throw it away anyway, so I guess you could do that. Um, you can also AZ a Hurt Ariados or a Hurt Verizian, whatever the case is, a Sceptile. If you can pick up a Sceptile and save it and put it back down and attach to it, and next turn you can Unseen Claw again. There's just a lot of things you can do with AZ, but mainly it's to pick up these Shamans and get them out of harm's way because we all know they give up two prizes and it does hurt. We have one copy of Lysander because every deck should have at least one copy of Lysander. Being able to bring something out of the active that your opponent has that you don't want there and put something from the bench in that place. Um, next up here we've got our items. This is all for our supporters by the way. Very, very, very uh, thin supporter lineup. Um, most of them, you know, you see five, six, seven different supporters. This one you only see four different ones and two of them are one-ups. But the way we're going to work with that is, of course, four copies of VS Seeker, standard in every deck. It doesn't matter what you're playing. 
if you don't have at least three VS Seekers in there, you're doing it wrong. It's such a great card. It's another reason why these are so highly wanted as well. They're just amazing. I mean, you can't play the deck, play any deck competitively without having VS Seekers. Very, very important. We have four copies of Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball, discard two cards and get a Pokemon out of your deck. Um, these are mainly used to bring our hand size down, to play Shaman down, or of course to seek out things that we need to complete our strategies, like Sceptiles, Mega Sceptiles, Spinarax, Ariados, Verizian, any of the Pokemon. It's all crucial to make it come together, and four copies of Ultra Ball gives us the most consistency. Also, we have four copies of Trainer's Mail. We've got a lot of really important items in this deck, and uh, you just really can't you can't run this deck without at least three copies. And most decks do run three copies of Trainer's Mail these days. You know, it gets you all of your items, all of your supporters, uh, your stadiums. It just, it's a really great card. And you don't have to use your supporter for the turn to play it. Like Skyla, for instance, where you can only get one Trainer card. So, Trainer's Mail, four copies, definitely good. All right, next up here, we have four copies of Super Scoop Up. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. But Professor K, you're playing cards in this deck that are out of format, like AZ, Super Scoop Up. Um, <laughs> the reason why they're here is because the format doesn't change for another month and a half. We've still got time, so why not have fun with these decks? This deck is built to be a very annoying and overly healing deck. So four copies of Super Scoop Up allows you to flip a coin if heads return one Pokemon and all cards attached to it to your hand. You got a Mega Sceptile that's about to die, Super Scoop Up, flip it up, boom. Pick it up, land on, if it lands on heads, pick it up, put all the energy back in your hand, and you're good to go again. You could switch into another Mega Sceptile, and then you can attach those two right back uh, to a Sceptile, of course, because you can't evolve the first turn, but you get what I'm saying. You can attach the two energies to the Sceptile that you just put right back down, and it's just really hard for your opponent to take enough prizes to win the game in time when you just keep super scoop up, heal all over again. No matter what the case is, you have a lot of ways to make sure you've got that Jagged Saber loop going all the time, healing all the damage, um, attaching energy constantly. It's just really good. So super scoop up's there for that reason and enjoy it until at least we know what the uh, final set's gonna bring us from Steam Siege, um, what it's gonna put back into the deck. Obviously, we know what most of the cards are, but they always sneak in a few English that you don't really know. So we're still waiting on that. But um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see why you don't play it out at least until it's said and done. So we also have four copies of Sceptile Spirit Link. Four copies, even though there's three Megas, for consistency purposes only. Yes, you only need, only need three. But if you have four, you have a higher chance of coming into one. So you can always throw one away with an Ultra Ball or something. Um, that's one thing that was really hard for me to get through my head as a beginning player of this game. But only putting in what you need is never going to win you big tournaments. Putting in a little more than you need will because it gives you consistency. This game is all about consistency. It's about consistency and it's about your matchups. It's about the meta. What are people playing and how are they building their decks? Everyone is going to build their deck for sheer consistency no matter what. What it all comes down to is what you face and you can't control that. So you just have to build a deck that you're comfortable with, that you know is good, and has good matchups across the board. If you pick a deck that only has a good matchup against one deck and it's fantastic and auto win, you're probably not going to do well because you're going to come across plenty of decks that just this deck is not going to be able to touch. So you know why not play something that's a little more balanced, that has good matchups, and depend on the consistency of your deck to win you games. That is the main key of being successful in Pokemon TCG. All right, continuing here after that little rant there, uh, we got one copy of Super Rod Shuffle, three of any combination of Pokemon and basic energy back into your deck. Obviously, if you are retreating, you're throwing away two grass energy every time you retreat with Mega Sceptile. You can use those two to put them back in the deck. And you can also use Energy Retrieval to put them back into your hand as well out of the discard pile to get them back. Um, if you have to keep doing it over and over again and you're not taking prizes, you will run out of energy with this deck. But, you know, you should only have to do it a few times, and there is a high count of energy that you can depend on here as well. We have one copy of Professor's Letter because, as we know, Jagged Saber only works when we have that energy in our hand. We want to have two grass energy in our hands when we go to use Jagged Saber. At least, well, at least one, because you can still use the ability or the effect of the attack. But Professor's Letter assures you that you will have at least one Grass Energy in your hand to be able to uh, maximize the effects of Jagged Saber. I'm just going to move stuff over here. I realize that my AZ is hanging off. 
the edge of my mat, and I know that um, Professor's Letter is probably going to do the same here, so let's just really move this down here so you guys can see the full layout of the deck and all the cards included. Got a little bit of turning to do there as well. All right, so we're coming close to having the end of this deck. Now, this is where things get interesting, and there's a lot of different ways that you can play your stadium lineup. Me, personally, I've come to this conclusion, and I feel like this is probably the best way for the way that I like to play, but if you guys have a different playing style, you can do this completely differently. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but I feel like you should include at least two of these stadiums. First and foremost, we've got two copies of Forest of Giant Plants. Each player's grass Pokemon can evolve during his or her first turn that they played it down. So again, if you're using the effect of where you want to play Mega Sceptile, then it might be smarter to just keep using your Forest of Giant Plants in play. Not to mention you can do a turn one Ariados and poison your opponent before you're even able to attack. That's also a big important thing as well. But if you're having to super scoop up a Mega Sceptile with a Sceptile and a Spirit Link, you can put them all right back down and it doesn't hurt you, and you can automatically just go and attach the two energies. You're not going to get end out of a Mega Sceptile that's in your hand. So, Force Giant Plants is really good for that reason, and I feel like it warrants at least two spots in the deck for the way that I want to play, for the way that I'm preparing myself to face the meta. Also, we have one copy of Skyfield. This is good, I think, for a temporary basis during setting up. Obviously, you're going to have a lot of Shaman in play. You're going to have a few Sceptile. You're going to have at least one Spinarak, Ariados, and maybe your Virizion. So you're going to run out of room really quickly on your bench. So I feel like, you know, you want to play everything out, get the Shamans down with Skyfield, put all your other Pokemon in play, and then when your opponent bumps your Stadium or you bump your own Stadium, then you can throw those Shamans away, get them out of harm's way, and it was like it never even happened. And if you have to, you can use Super Rod to bring them back into the deck and use them again, which is also important. The final card here, this is a personal choice, and I feel like it's important in most matchups because Mega Sceptile itself is not necessarily going to be good against everything across the board. Sometimes Sceptile EX is better because it's more powerful. Instead of 100, you're dealing 130, and um, if you had room in the deck for Muscle Bands, because you play it with Muscle Band, it's even better. 150, uh, you know, it's, it's better. It's just better. Um, but I do like the fact that Mega Sceptile has the health that it does. 220 is very powerful. It's not easy to knock out, unlike a 170. 170 is a little more unlikely to survive a lot of attacks that are in the current game. So I have one copy of Shrine of Memories. So each player's evolved Pokemon can use any attack from its previous evolutions, but you still need the necessary energy. The reason why this is so big is you can play Mega Sceptile and if you don't want to use Jagged Saber, you can use Unseen Claw with Poisonous Nest. Actually, you know, get your opponent poison first. Then use Unseen Claw underneath the Mega Sceptile because Shrine of Memories allows you to use it. And you're hitting for 130 instead of 100. So you could actually use Unseen Claw one turn and Jagged Saber the next. And you're knocking out anything that has 230 HP or less. So I think that's a big deal. And I think it warrants at least one spot of the deck. It's very situational, but it's good to have this, I think, if you really need it. Also, we've got our energy count, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 grass energy. So 9 is a pretty good number. I feel like it's good in Greninja decks as far as water goes, and it's also good in Mega Sceptile decks. 9 is just a good number for energy. It seems to be a pretty balanced number as far as all decks across the board that play only basic energy. I don't know why that is, but 9 just seems to be the number that works. So this really is what the deck is as far as my build. There's plenty of ways you can build this. You could build this aggressive Sceptile EX and go with Muscle Bands and, and go, you know, hitting for 150 instead of 130. Um, there's a lot of things you can do, really. There really is. There's a lot of ways you can go about it. But this is the Mega Sceptile build that I particularly enjoy playing more than anything. Um, being able to super scoop up and heal. I don't need to hit for tons of damage when I'm able to play shenanigans like scoop ups and healing and, and AZ and all this stuff. It's just really a fun deck to play. I really enjoy it and I think you guys will too. You can build this so many different ways. Let me just stress that right now. This deck is not perfect the way that it is. There's plenty of ways to play Mega Sceptile. There's plenty of ways to play Sceptile. This is just my build, what I like, and I think it's fun. I don't think that this is, you know, a super, super competitive deck, but it is competitive enough to do well in tournaments. So 
You guys can do with it what you will. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and of course, subscribe for more Pokemon TCG content here on the Pokemon Evolutionaries. And we'll have another deck for you on next Thursday, and then we'll have another Battle Frontier the Friday after that. So this Friday, we're going to have uh, just a regular TCG opening, but it's going to be a special one. So you guys aren't going to want to miss it. I promise you it's going to be good, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So take this deck, do with it what you will, go have fun with it, play it in some tournaments, play it with your friends, and just see what you guys think. Make the adjustments that you want to make and make it your own. Um, that's one thing I have to stress is that net decking is not always the way to go. By net decking, I mean copying a deck and then just going and playing it. So make it your own. Have fun with it. The game is all about having fun. This just gives you an idea of what you can do with one version of this deck. So with that being said, guys, I hope to see you in the next video and that you all enjoyed this deck profile. So until then, I'm Professor K for the Pokemon Evolutionaries, and you all take care. <laughs>